I want to talk about or listen to you about something that everybody talks about all the time, but I still don't think we have a really systematic understanding of it, which is how long do we play? And we could play, and I could be talking about the length of a session. I could be talking about the number of sessions. And we could also be talking about the content, whether the content tells us to stop or not. And why we stop or, you know, anything like that. And people always just come up with the excuse, well, it was a convention game, so that's all it was. That's what it was. Or they come up with the excuse of this is, uh, we, we played for 10 years, but then we kind of stopped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And things like that. I mean, they don't use any principles for me to grab in my mind. And it just, it seems very vague for something that is so important to the activity. Um, so what I asked people to do was to bring at least one game that uh, either seemed to you to be especially short form or the opposite that seems to be to almost require or, or really to expect infinite play. Um, so, or, or as is in so many cases, just completely silent about that. Mm -hmm. So the implication is, well, you could just keep playing. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, anybody want to start with an example? Mm, I, I found an article uh, from Martin Ralia, I think. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned uh, a game I'm a co-author. So uh, this is uh, the Beast, right? And the Beast is um, is a game when you write a diary of having sex with the Beast. And um, so one unit of play is f you spend 15 minutes. Uh, writing about your experience and answering questions and it have a definite um, end of play after 21 days mm -hmm. so it's hard to say is it very short because you like you play 15 minutes a day so it's not long mm. or um, because in the fiction you're playing kind of your alter ego who writes a diary so Somehow you're this person, uh, you're imagining uh, yourself having the sex with the beast for those 21 days. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no, yes. Mm. Mm. And a short game, there there are some, some games from um, Norwegian uh, style anthology. Mm. There is uh, mainly a game, Stock Birmingham 00. zero. Uh, this is about like very boring, dull Norwegian people who are after a very dull Norwegian match, uh, like uh, a, a soccer match, I think. Mm -hmm. And they uh, and um, the point of play is to imagine how those people are and to role play them for fifteen min minutes. Mm. And being dull for fifteen minutes mm. is is long. <laughs> 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 like really, and it's hard to be um, dull. Like it's hard to uh, to not tell anything interesting. Like whenever you go into details, you're <clears throat> you're starting to sound interesting, and you're not allowed, right? Uh, somebody else has to suddenly make it duller to help mm -hmm. out, maybe. So, oh, that's a <laughs> okay, okay. That's we should try playing that sometime. I'm I'm actually I'm actually intrigued. I I played it with people who who didn't play it before or are playing games and they were they, they loved it they like really wow that's fascinating considering that often we think the way <laughs> to bring people into role playing is to be as extravagant as possible you know to we have to excite them we have to be better than the TV show 
you know, better than the movie. You know, we have to be really, really crazy about here this. Here be awesome. Right, right. Here be awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. All right. And so, okay. So those are those are both really, really good examples of the short, the really, really short. I mean, mandated short. And then you have what isn't really all that short in terms of twenty-one sessions. But it's only 21 days, which is really short in real time for a role-playing mm -hmm. game. And then you also have the only 15 minutes of play, right? So, so we have sort of a lot of shortness in there. Mm -hmm. um, any other, anyone else? On short games comes to my mind uh, um, The Quiet Year. Mm -hmm. It's a game that with uh, just... T taking away a couple of cards for every seed, it easily starts and ends uh, in a couple of hours. And that's kind of like my record play mm -hmm. for short duration. That's why I always use it as a, basically a business card for everyone that is interested in right. role-playing games. Mm -hmm. But it is scared about all these big time commitments mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that always works since one of the shortest fastest games i know there is a game that came out a little bit before it which has some similarities that i always like to contrast with it but its playtime is pretty similar and since it's similar in other ways i'll mention it it's called chronicles of skin oh yeah you're right and that it that one has a little bit more equipment um Quiet Year has a little bit of equipment, right? You have the little pebbles and the little red things and stuff like that. But the um, Chronicles of Skin has a little bit more equipment with a special deck as well. Uh, but they both draw. I think that's another thing that, yeah. that they're, they both you, you both draw out everything and these little weird sketches and stuff. So, um, so I think there's a number of games which I think of in this category for time. We play them once. And they last a couple of hours, maybe a little bit more, depending. But you play Bacchanal is another good example of that kind of thing. What's your thought on the, what, the, what you made a face? I want you. I want, what face um, is that? I I played it, but I played it over internet, and mm -hmm. it it kind of didn't work. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I think mostly because. Um, I played with people who weren't that they, they had no trouble with taboo. Mm. They they mm -hmm. they weren't excited by taboo right. things. Mm. So so there wasn't a shame of of telling like mm -hmm. uh, things like um like I I had some escalations to the bushery I think and uh it it escalated into like having I think in, they having intercourse with with a tiger in the orgy, and like the tiger wasn't tamed, so he he shrouded. Yeah, we we can see where this is going to go. Yes, yeah. Yeah. it was pretty yeah. awful. There's so a... it it was it was funny because for me it was somehow exciting, but I don't think it was exciting for for other right. players. Those in the first time, I got the that, same experience, yeah, right? There's uh, some writing about playing Bacchanal from the Forge about this exact issue. And what we discovered was that it became far more effective if you started, in fact, if you really almost stayed almost entirely with completely personal, non-transgressive sex and mm -hmm. sensuality, and you really stayed very personal with it, and it was surprising that talking about something that was very, very basic and very, you know, not very exciting on any kind of porn site yes. was actually harder and more intimate yes. than talking about some crazy thing that you could have seen on some screen somewhere far away from you. Uh, and so, so, yeah. And then it worked a lot my... better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, th I, I think it, it worked for us better with zombie porn. Do you know this one? Yeah. The game, zombie porn. No, the game, zombie but, porn. But I was <laughs> nodding because he, of course, knows any game called zombie porn. <laughs> okay, so uh, zombie porn is is one of those games from Norwegian style uh, movement, I think. Mm -hmm. um, 
basically you're zombies who um who are in a pornographic industry and they want to become a star and they also have those body parts with other zombies steal from them to be a better star and um you also like burn burn out during like being being a star running in those movies and so on so basically mechanic goes like this that you do some stuff like look for love or naval gaze or try or hunt for parts and then you uh star in a movie and you decide whether you're working with others like m- trying to make a better scene with others and then you share uh the points between all of you or you want to be a pr- prima ballerina pr- prima prima donna mm-hmm. so you work for yourself and like it's in both cases like you you it, it changes how you play and how other trust you mm-hmm. and it's pretty hard to win because you either you you have to both be the best as a star and not uh getting too much not get too much angst now w- let i think we're getting more into the yes. the content at the moment is the yeah. is the but play it's one, i was going it's to say one, one session mm-hmm. right it's so. one session i think and it's it was kind of more intimate for me mm-hmm. like uh I had to use some from some pornographic imagery. Um but they are into like this horror zombie right. style like awful stuff. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of funny and weird right. in the same time. Sounds it's it's strange. I'm thinking of the game Give Me the Brain from Cheap Ass Games. I know this. Uh, well, it was just how the the I'm sure the games are not very similar, but in my head, unfortunately, <laughs> they are creating something similar but okay so let's keep going from person to person um uh herman or angel any um yeah so one short sh- short form game at least one with with a, uh, a distinct amount of time is uh, I, I remember is a fiasco mm-hmm. good which example is yeah not not extremely short but it has the the, the beats and uh one session beginning to end mm-hmm. of a story and uh, the, the times I played it, we we played it for a couple of hours mm-hmm. m- at most, from where you started uh, to, uh, to roll the dice to set up the game to uh, ending ending the story. Now, so that's, that's one of the one of the questions I have is how many of mm-hmm. these games could extend if people wanted it. Most of the games we were talking about have a whole play resource, yep. an entire resource for the game itself. Mm-hmm. Where you use things up, or there's a designated number of yeah. uh, of points. And one thing that I before we get to Ahel, sorry to make you wait, mm-hmm. but one thing that I want to hold in our heads is when you have a game that people decide they are going to play in that fashion, and it may not be, and it has beats, or it has acts, or it has steps, or it has an end game. And they say, let's play a pretty quick version of it. Let's turn it into one of these single session games. Let's, you know, it, it seems like you should be able to do that. Look at it. It's got an end game. Look at it. It's got yeah. well, it's we'll, chapters, we'll, we'll right? Wanna... And you well, and you say so. Yeah. But it is either harmed by doing it, or you can't, and you go ahead and extend it anyway. And the two best for this is the Mountain Witch and My Life with Master. Mm. Oh yeah! Everyone tries to make them into one little short session for a convention or something like that, and then they either regret it or they just say screw it. Remember my life with An- with uh, Angelica, yeah. Alessandro, right? And remember, it's same so thing. Bad. That took like what two or two, that took a whole day or two days or something. And that same convention at Internoscon, they did. They said I they were going to play. Managed to finish it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was terrible. And then there was, but then there was that Mountain Witch game that somebody started, mm. and I think it went the whole convention. They just wouldn't stop yeah. playing it, 
You know, you're a, this was supposed to be a convention with all these short games, you know, that we all sit down and play a little bit. And these people were over there in the mountain, which are like, we're not, we're not leaving. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, um, so that, but it's interesting that some games intrinsic content, even though they have these structural features that really circumscribe play, really draw people into wanting to play them for, you know, look for a, a good long time. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, it's not... I just want to keep that in mind that it's not just the mechanics. There's also, something about sometimes. the content that works well yeah. for a short game. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah. But maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah well, one thing we, we we tried at at some point was uh, doing a prime time adventures and doing a pilot, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then either continuing on for for for, for because the story and the characters gripped us and was interesting. Or we played just the pilot and finished the the, the story of those characters, because. Right. But the pilot is um, designed uh, just for this, right? Yeah. Like you we can, can see whether right. we are interested. Right. I was I was thinking like, uh, um, so most of those games uh, we that were mentioned mm -hmm. uh, have a distinctive ending condition mm -hmm. and most of them were designed for uh, one uh, one session mm -hmm. like a regular one session like four yes. hours mm -hmm. yeah um, and I was thinking about games like mm, like like 15 minutes mm -hmm. like yeah, really um, short form yeah really short yeah. yes I was thinking about like there is a game uh, Orc in the Well. Mm -hmm. So there is an orc, and he's in the well, and he will die probably. But right now he can't do nothing. So like every every person at the table um, says something like uh, what happens outside or what the uh, orc thinks. Mm -hmm. And we play for for fifteen minutes mm -hmm. and design like this. And I think fifteen minutes is enough to feel the situation, but but not but it's not um, boring yet. Let's follow up on that in a minute. I want to I want to think about that more. That exact point, mm -hmm. um, or talk of discuss that more. Ayo, what game comes to mind for you? For what? Uh, for 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 short games? Either it doesn't matter at this point. We're talking about either infinite or really short. Okay, for infinite, uh, no, well, for short games, I have uh, one that I, I I mentioned from time to time, which is a Hot Gas Making Out mm -hmm. by Ben Lima. <laughs> nice. It is designed for one hour, one hour and a half each kind of iteration of the game, uh, and that is attainable if people know. Algebra of the rule and the aesthetics of the game uh, beforehand, if not, usually drags until like two and two hours and a half. But I've seen it like work in one hour and have two sessions like uh, uh, in like uh, two hours. Uh, mm -hmm. So it, it is designed for that. For weirder uh, examples, uh, there's this game that appears in a collection I have. Uh, called, I don't know, par Paranoia or something like that. They are on to me, uh, Red, or something like that, which is a, a, it's a game in which every day for a week you record uh, three, uh, I think one or three minutes of, uh, of yourself uh, saying, oh, um, I've noticed weird things at work. I've, I, I think people are becoming, are secretly lizards or something like that. And you upload them to YouTube. Um, it is um, the sort of stuff that you're supposed to say every day and that kind of stuff. Um, so that will be in total like, uh, yeah, like 20 minutes or so. Um, and another one is is from a competition I was a judge for recently. Uh, the the Spanish version of the 200 words uh, right. RPG competition. Uh, there's a game very similar to this one in which for for one week uh, every time you meet a condition and something like, uh, like uh, you see a strange shadow you you notice something weird uh, you look behind your back and see nothing you 
um, you write that down in a in a diary and take a, a few coins out of your pocket and if most of the coins are uh, head uh, is something like no it's fine it's fine this this is normal and if they are tails it's like oh I'm go this is something is going on I'm going crazy uh, and then at the end of the the week you decide what kind of what happened so it's also mm, like right. very short uh, uh, or very short times now I'll take my turn um, and I can say that throughout the last 20 years or 15 years really for the last 15 years finding games that making games that are designed for one session of play and intended to be a very cathartic experience is almost the primary design goal in the independent scene. I mean, that's the everybody. A lot of people really want to make that kind of game. Um, it seems to go with it in people's minds that if I'm going to make a game which is physically small, then play is also physically small uh -huh. uh, for some reason, which isn't true. Personally, I would love to see an infinite game for play that's 200 words long. That's a design goal. Mm. I want, that's a text goal I want to see. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing I'm saying is that there are hundreds of these. When I did my Ronnie's contests, almost every game was a single session game. Um, well, anyway, uh, one of those was, was kind of interesting. It wasn't really single session, but it's a lot like The Beast or Slay With Me where you have short meetings and there's a mm. relatively fixed structure of how many meetings, even if it you know, is or isn't mandated exactly. Um, and in the case of this one, it's called Swords of the Skull Takers. It's by Joe Prince. I played that. Yes, I remember. Nice. And you, you did a great job because you videoed, your, you recorded yourself. Like the the person who is uh, not recordings, just you know, uh, transmissions, posted, uh, right? On uh, yeah. Facebook, right? With the picture and the diary, basically. Right. It's mm -hmm. and it, it is also a diary game. Uh, it's also it's a solo game, uh, like the Beast as well, and it is one of the first <laughs> really effective solo games. It was uh, it was a contestant in in the Ronnies in 2011, but also in. Uh, Emily and Epidiah's solo games mm -hmm. project that they did. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's it's now available in playable form. It's really, really good. But uh, to bring up Ben Lehman again, we also have uh, Clover. Oh, which yeah, is, that's one, yeah. That's one of the few I don't have. Yeah, which is a, a, a two, well, here. <laughs> I am such a bad person. I hell. I hell. <laughs> okay, so um, the, uh, the Clover is a game for two people where it's very conversational. And well, I'm bringing it up because unlike a lot of these other games, which are mandated, play this long, there's no mandate at all. And it's almost just like having a nice little conversation with people and finishing when it's over. Finishing because it finishes. I adopted or was influenced by this when I wrote a sort of a proto game called Shine a Light, which is one of my religious games. And it is uh, also based on principles of conversation. It's based on uh, uh, certain kinds of comics that are extremely variable in their length. Even if a person puts out a full length com comic, they have little short chapters that are any length they want. Sometimes they are a bit of newspaper strips, so the story can go on however long they want. And, um, and so I have a mechanic where anybody at the table can say, that's it, or that's a wrap in English, um, just to, to stop right there, because that's enough for all of that interaction. We should go and do some other interaction, or stop the, the, there's a There's a stopping point for the game as a whole, too. So you get a whole bunch of variable length little stories... But when they say stop, they're not just stopping that arc. You stop playing. You are supposed to stop playing. Even if you played for 10 minutes or if you played for two hours. Mm -hmm. That's the end point right there for that <laughs> session. And so um, I'm interested that 
I'm talking now about very short games that are not mandated for their ending point. Hmm. That's what I'm what I'm in, I'm interested in that as an edge case, you know, hmm. of some of these, and that's why, um, Alexandra, you were talking about games that lasted short enough to be interesting. I could see that as a negative feature, potentially that I could even be really mean and say the game designers don't trust their game enough to let people play it. They're just going to... It's like selling the movie on the trailer and then saying, okay, that's all there is because it can never be better than the trailer. Mm. You know, everyone's um, so excited about the trailer, the movie could never be that good. We'll just do the trailer. That and, happens and sometimes now. But. Well, I'm not, I know, but I'm not saying... That's a criticism or a potential criticism. I'm not saying mm. I believe it. Whereas on the other okay. hand... Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so uh, I know, uh, has anyone here uh, played uh, Stoke Birmingham 00? No. No. Okay, yep. so f f my experience was that um, being dull isn't interesting as, um, um, as, as an idea for the game. Mm -hmm. But it sounds weird and funny. So I wanted to try it because of this. Yeah. Like, I will give you a boring game. Hey, I right. want to see no, of a of course. So we all, I, I think we all feel the same way. All of us looked mm. interested when you mentioned okay. it. We were like, really? And um, when you play it, it's boring. Like, you're not allowed to say interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. And interesting stuff, uh, when, when nothing is interesting, interesting stuff could be something like, um, what have you done lately oh it was awful day like a plumber came and it starts to be interesting mm -hmm. because i want to know something would was happen he cute did he did he flood your floor did you know yes right right, right. so it's it's like it's almost a story so to to make the being door effective you're not telling things like mm -hmm. You're not giving names to things. You're not giving those like interesting details, like any details at all, because details are like by default, they are interesting. Mm -hmm. And because of this, it's tiresome. So having this um, information that it will stop after 15 minutes, it, it helps to engage with the situation right now. And I think this is designed for f with, um, how to say it, it has its purpose. I, I can like, see any number, yeah. I'm, I'm very interested to play, to discover these. Um, yeah. So if, if there were no, like, no option to, to get out from this game, like... <laughs> You're trapped in hell. Yeah, it could be a nightmare. <laughs> like, I had this... Um, this experience when I was playtesting the be the beast, mm -hmm. uh, so there wasn't ending condition, and every time I came to the game, I answered my question. There were like more questions, like there were over 30, 30 questions, and it started to be um, toxic and mm -hmm. uncomfortable, and like really awful. I was totally an awful person. And I have this ritual that I um, may make a new uh, card every like 10, 10 a.m. every day and every day. And somehow I couldn't stop. Like I, I didn't know how to get out of the game. Mm. I, I couldn't just left left it, mm -hmm. leave it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So interesting. That's actually a really again. I I don't. I think we're actually discovering certain variables as we talk, you know, specific. Um, so let's see if we uh, shift a little bit, if that's okay. Um, mm -hmm. And think about the existing expectation in some culture. Sometimes it's not just a game. It's a whole culture of role playing in a region or in a group that you you don't talk about endings we start playing mm -hmm. 
and it's it's just not even conceivable. Oh, it would be it would be considered failure, and it is considered failure. That campaign failed. They didn't say we stopped, we finished. God never we finished, but it fell apart. We failed. You know the yeah. campaign failed. The you know the GM couldn't keep it going, or something like that. And um, and instead of talking about this as some kind of problem, I mean it is a it is an interesting expectation. I can't think of almost any, I mean, leisure activity that people say that about. People expect that they will play a given game for the rest of their lives, but they don't plan to play that chess game for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, mm -hmm. So, I'm, I'm thinking about games in which that is at least tacitly the expectation. Uh, I mean, most traditional games sort of have that baked yeah. into the culture more than anything, like the mythical thirty years old D and D campaign or traveler. Oh, game. look out! One of one of the one of the people. First of all, I mean, maybe someone here, but. Uh, but there, there are people at Addict Play who are going to suddenly punch in their keys and call you names for sure. picking I'm on their 30-year game, you know. But I'm not saying that's yeah. impossible, but yeah. that's like... Uh, uh, that, that's like... I mean, I think that's the deception. I also think that it's interesting to me to see the games where it might look like that's what they are, but they aren't really. A really good example is the old Rune Quest, mm -hmm. where it never was able to say in its rules what mythic hero questing would be like when your character became an extremely powerful Rune Lord. Getting to Rune Lord status was a big part of play, and the rules for that were extensive, and what you did after that was extensive. But it kept talking about these this more mythic presence that your character could have. Mm -hmm. And it would refer to hero questing as a process. But it never really ever went there in the rules. So in practice, people would get to that point and then kind of say, all right, our characters are mythic. And then... You were you you had done it, you know. You had done it, um, Herman. Maybe you are the right person to ask about this. When I was a tween or early teenager, and looking at my early Dungeons and Dragons books, and it went to level twenty, and I always presumed that because then it said level. I seem to remember it said level twenty plus, and that you would just use the same progression from that point on. For further and further levels, infinitely. But now I hear people talking about D and D, yeah, as if it always was capped at twenty levels. It it wasn't in my experience, right? I I never heard of that. Um, the the Moldvay and Menser sets started to have these very fixed, yeah, categories of level, um, yeah, and maybe might, that's where it came in formally. I don't know. Yeah, one one of them went went the the, the they had the basic experts right uh, right the yeah, et cetera that, that yeah. went and that went to level thirty six and mm -hmm. then you became wow. an immortal. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Alessandro, thirty six yeah. magic yeah. number. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then in we played we, we, we played advanced Dungeons and dragons for for ages uh, in a rotating mm -hmm. group of game masters and characters mixing and matching mm -hmm. and. Well, of course, you had adventures which started and stopped and ended. Mm -hmm. uh, we explored uh, Tegel Manor until every nook and cranny was explored. That's right, and, yes. And the graveyard was filled with, with, mm -hmm. with the characters who didn't make it. Um, and that adventure was done, but the, some of the characters went on and played and played on mm -hmm. until they again be, got to level, well, uh, Archmage, level, level 18 or... Uh, level 20, 21, 23, <laughs> uh, somewhere around. Uh, that, that's where it petered out because right. there were no interesting adventures and you went back to the lower mid levels because right. play was more interesting back then. M most, yeah. I mean, but the game the game itself and the, the campaign world we created with 
all those different game masters that existed for 10, 10, 15 years or something like that. And the until prison. until the people drifted apart, right. got kids, got mm. moved away, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and and the the play group split up slowly but surely. Now, however, intrinsically in the fiction and system, mm -hmm. there was nothing that said that had to stop. No. Right. So that's that's no, the kind of thing I'm a thinking social, about. A right. social thing that it stopped. Right. Yeah. Um, and then that the, the rule set when right. that you had to stop there. Champions had no, and none of the super games of the earlier, of the the the, the first really really big super games, none of them even mentioned such a thing. But I would say most mm. of the traditional role playing games have this same trait. The core point of the whole game is usually uh, the accumulation of power, and that has to be endless. And it is presented as endless. It's presented uh, as endless. The rules yeah. don't really support it. Well, a lot of the rules how... have these weird, interesting exit points, like I was talking about, mm. yeah. that are not stated as such. Um, but go on, Alessandro. Um, uh, when you mentioned RuneQuest and the mythic level right. that is not really uh, uh, described, it's just this vague idea and that's supposed to be the exit point, uh, it immediately reminded me of Cult. Right. I was just thinking cult, cult. Yeah. Well, yeah. You are supposed to be this person shifting between realities and whatever, right. but actually the rules push you towards the the, the right. We talked the about ladder that. Yeah. of mental balance, positive or negative, and when you finally awaken, then what? That's it. Right, <laughs> there's, right. There's the whole next level that is right. not even imagined. Yeah. Because yeah. Beyond. I remember interviews. People made interviews yeah. with the authors, and they and they would always ask this question, and they were like, "I don't know." <laughs> Alexandra, what were you thinking? Okay, I was I was thinking about D and D or um or not really uh, D and D. I mean, uh, the adventures, the modules or yeah. supplements or mm -hmm. something. So we we used to think about uh, D and D. Like you are talking here, that D and D and the experience of D and D is endless play. Mm -hmm. But when you when you take a module, this is your game. Like you have the scenario, right? It's plus, very fixed. Plus mm -hmm. the plus the rules from for other books, and this is your like kind of game, and it has the ending. Yes. And the uh, ending right. is when when you. Uh, do stuff that's stated as goals in the scenario. Yeah, usually these agree. endless experiences yeah. are always broken down into quests or right. in playable chunks. Example. Right. Yeah, yeah. story yeah. arcs. I completely um, agree. Yeah. And this is very common in the games that are purportedly endless, I think. So, so this is my question. Is the D&D &D a game? that is infinite or is a module a game that has an ending this is what, a play what, question what's, right not a the the game and text doesn't matter what, here what's it's the what, game? Well, mm -hmm. what is well like, this is the this is one of those edition war problems too <laughs> because in the late 1980s it was very important to play through the published designated adventures that walked you through the published novel. You got to be a secondary character in the novel by playing this game, and that meant you had to follow the novel. Mm. And so, um, and so that was a completely, um, really, there isn't one D and D. There's lots of no. D and D. This and the D and D, yeah, the right. D and D we we played a lot of was the D and D where you had the sandbox. This is the setting. Tonight we're we're playing level f five to eight uh, characters. Let let's let's do a mm -hmm. level range. Oh, someone's someone's new. Oh, that level one character comes along as well. Right. And we go explore this castle, which this game master has prepared prepared, with no set scenario or right. story or whatever. Um, 
but we go explore it because no, we want a, money. A little or, bit. Going back to my... a little, yeah. little, there's a little bit of, of oh, we're going to rescue someone or somewhat. But that's the story bit was almost made up uh, as an afterthought because right. what it was was the play area with the interesting traps and the uh, traps and, st- and, and yeah. things to discover and... Mm. I have because, a, and well, there's a story. I have a whole yeah. seminar about how that's not actually a sandbox, but that's neither me nor, uh, nor there. Well, but, maybe sandbox is not the right word, right. but I know what, a, I know what you mean. Yeah, a place, a a a, a chessboard which you're exploring. Right. Let's let's yeah. put it that way. So yeah. I was thinking about um, Apocalypse World, mm-hmm. and in um, what's the word like? A difference between uh, a different or maybe a similarity uh, between D and D, Infinite Play in D and D, and Infinite Play in Apocalypse World. Mm-hmm. So it seems as if you could play Apocalypse World endless, mm-hmm. because like you make a character, you play it, they do some stuff, they blow blow up things, they I know they have sex, they go on a raid, whatever. But in this in the same time, you get experience, you get experience points, you get new uh, new moves, new um, assets, new, new uh, powers, whatever. Um, and the, the book says something like that you will see the end of the game. Mm-hmm. somehow and uh, when I played or when I listened uh, the podcast uh, from for uh, Apocalypse World uh, campaign it seemed as people were taking new new moves and it uh, triggered the end of the of play like mm-hmm. not because uh, the characters were mm. um moving play but because it made uh, a kind of story about the characters or well, said this character it, changed it, it, into that character yes they, so. they they changed somehow and we could see it like the beginning the middle mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. ending of the story somehow by by taking this uh, this new moves and powers and those and taking those new moves and powers and assets uh, make made um, changes in the world in right. the fiction, um, and even even if there isn't a fixed end of play, mm-hmm. and theoretically you could play infinitely, uh, people weren't like they were right. feeling as if there is um, a natural end of play. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the example that comes to my mind is if I begin by playing a Skinner, and everybody here is very familiar with Apocalypse World, so let's imagine that events are such that when I get to the advanced moves, it makes a lot of sense to me, and with to everybody else, let's say it too, that I say I'm going to now take on the Hard Holder as my new skin. Mm-hmm. And so you can imagine all the events and things such that this Skinner has become, you know, the leader of this huge group and whatever, right? You can mm-hmm. see that. When your Skinner successfully, plausibly, and entertainingly has now turned into the hard holder, that's a really, really good time to close on the character, to fade on the character, and everybody goes, ah, so that's what happened to them. Mm-hmm. You know, and but, so it's a. It makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. But also, uh, what I meant was that people were kind of knowing that those, like the effect of uh, taking those moves, um, was kind of informing about ending the campaign. Like not not only the character, right? Mm-hmm. Somehow, like even if it's not uh said in a text that after taking this and this and this you're ending the the game right right it's not there there's yeah. um uh, yeah well um there kind of is uh, um because eventually you can uh, end up taking all the possible advancements for your playbook 
and then you're left with your character retires in safety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, you could hop to a new playbook uh, and get a bit more uh, That's still a character's fate, though. Technically speaking, you could do that and say, well, now what do I do? And everybody else says, screw you, we're still playing. Uh, yeah, I mean, so, the, uh, so even that's not a designated campaign ender. So that's probably yeah. why uh, Alexandra notices this uh, frustration with this kind of mechanic, because once character arc uh, ends, but it doesn't tie up the game for everyone. So maybe the group as players feels like oh, it's time to wrap it up. Does that really the happen? Story, the fiction doesn't match this. Does that really happen? I mean, theoretically it could, but does that really happen? I don't see it. What I've experienced personally is that when some character is close to that, the GM, the MC, will do its best to actually push things right, everybody a little else, bit yeah. more than usual in a way that it wraps up. Right. But let's remember, at least the first edition of Monster Hearts actually has a very mechanical, yeah. the game has ended condition, and that's it. Yeah. Yes, they got as well. Yeah. So my feeling was that I wasn't frustrated with this. Like for me, mm -hmm. it was more like um, I appreciate that there is a mechanic that doesn't say uh, yeah. you explicitly to do something, but you're doing it anyway. Like whatever mm -hmm. reasons they there are. Sorcerers Actually. kickers and their conclusion is not identical, mm. but there's a very similar dynamic relative to play as a whole. Yeah, I yeah. think um, with Apocalypse World, there's two factors. Uh, as you have, as Alexander says, has said, uh, the characters kind of have these arcs that they go mm -hmm. through, mm -hmm. and that's something very different. Well, well, I don't, I don't want to compare with other games, but they have these natural arcs, and they can go on for a little bit, and you can change playbooks. But you can you can find very easily and see very easily like end points. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's like a, a, a concept the players are familiar with, and also think the surrounding culture of play uh, uh, tells you to look for that kind of thing. You're supposed to look for a neat conclusion for you. Whenever, your ever since my life with Master, people familiar with it or indirectly influenced by it culturally sort of have end game floating in their head for some mm -hmm. reason mm -hmm. yeah yeah um uh, so yeah i think may, it may be a combination of that, those two things hmm. well let's let's look at the scope of our topic because one thing that is fictionally combined with the topic is the concept of fictional endings Mm -hmm. And somewhat counterintuitively, I don't really want to focus on uh, fictional... I don't want to focus on formal endings of play. I'm interested in when, like we were talking about, when the intrinsic fiction ending makes us not need to play anymore. That's one thing. Another one is when... Uh, is, is, and when those when when that's not the case, you know, when play could go on, go on, go on, go on, or when it really, really makes a lot of sense for it to be very short. Um, I'm interested in this because we we are very. Well, do, how do I explain this? The conditions for play that I have encountered is when you have a convention game and you're not going to see these people again and you are going to play with them and you are going to play this thing and that is that. And in some cases you're playing a game which is built to go on for a considerable amount of time. So somehow it's possible to play a game that's built to go on for a considerable amount of time but to accept that you're going to play it in short form. Mm -hmm. Now, that seems so obvious and easy, but really, it isn't the same thing. I know I'm never going to play this 7th level Elven Assassin again. Mm -hmm. I know it. So, it's not the same thing as building that Assassin through many levels myself 
with no end in sight. It's just not the same thing. Not socially, not creatively, not experientially, not imaginatively. And I really don't think we have good language for it. Saying one shot mm -hmm. isn't good enough. Mm -hmm. What does that really mean? Does it like mean it's yeah. one session? It's but it's it doesn't tell us day. anything else. That's all it tells yes. us. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's right. a functional. Like mm -hmm. I can play it on one set, one sitting. So it's or we are going to play this thing, which typically or isn't thought of as being played in one sitting. But we are going to do it. So in many ways, we are designing a game without talking yeah. about yeah. it. Right. We've just done game design, and so it. Uh, so in that sense, maybe there's a lot more historical short form in disguised as long form infinite play. Oh yeah, uh, the if you think the about D and D, right. for example, perfect, there's yeah, a exactly. whole subculture of how to design uh, a convention scenario. Frank Mentzer won an award for that in uh, 1980 or so, and therefore became the line developer mm -hmm. for. And he is the author of the seminal, uh, basic little, you know, four part. He's not the first to do it, but he really made an art of the entertaining three or four part little adventures that you quote ran through and that's the word they use to run through um okay. and that that's what you did that's what you were here for that's what we play and whatever the rule book said about infinite levels or going up to 20 or 30 levels screw it who cares we're not that that's over there that's in that rule book which none of you are supposed to read anyway so um Ooh. yeah so the the idea though is that this kind of play may be the default yeah, yeah. like there's a, an image about many people about for example pbta games and many, many other indie games or whatever you want to call them of being short term games what where most of them are, are supposed to be for middle like yeah most of most so of them are, are fairly uh several session at least yeah 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 like yeah. seven ten, ten fifteen yeah, yeah. right yeah source for my mountain which all of these short things, campaign yeah. and actually, ten yeah. sessions yeah. right yeah. and actually yeah. powered by the apocalypse games are i think one of the worst kind of games to do a demo or short demo sorcerer is awful because awful i was it. discussing yeah. this with a friend just the other day i was appalled at how in a whole game session i always managed no matter which pptr i was using to do so little mm -hmm. because they are so granular that unless the players and the gm somehow consciously push to fast forward, to do an aggressive uh, framing, maybe you start with an aggressive framing in an already interesting and dramatic situation, but mm -hmm. then its resolution is played through very small bits, move mm -hmm. by move by move. They snowball, they make a chain as... The Does this sound familiar said. right now, Ahel? Because <laughs> he's, yeah. descri he's describing our Monster Hearts game that we are currently playing. I right. never played a Monster Hearts game that actually, in the fiction, made it over three days. Mm -hmm. Like 15 sessions, three days time in the story. Mm -hmm. A whole session, just the morning. Mm -hmm. If we were lucky. I think we may have gotten around five days, maybe. Something like that, yeah, six sessions. But, but that's kind but of that's, the point yeah. of Monster Hearts in yeah. the end. Right, You're right. living the wrong five days of this that's, character. That's boy. <laughs> That's for sure. So it's fun, um, it's nice, mm -hmm. but like every time I did a demo for Dungeon World and I got asked for them a lot, so I did a lot of them, uh, it was always like a half-baked creature because right. we have this strong start and more than actually play through anything concrete, you try to showcase the system to show yeah. the players mm -hmm. why they could like uh, the game. And it's fun because you have a couple of scenes, maybe three, full of actions and beat them up and stuff. So it's okay. But you never actually get to anything concrete. You can't think well, in terms of like this, a D&D &D short yeah. quest. Yeah. We you should, never see a start and an end. That's another really interesting, 
variable that definitely needs to get dissected in you know in in the future application i was thinking of something that i have observed many times which is that my game spiona is a little unusual in that it is supposed to be played in two sessions okay mm -hmm. right two sessions you're done and it is interesting to me especially because the game is optimized for people to run off to the internet after the first session and learn and instantly give themselves an education in something mm -hmm. and then come back full of you know excitement about all more things that they can put in and that if you do it in two sessions that happens it's extremely mm -hmm. consistent but it's very very hard to get people to agree to two sessions yeah Mm, they will yeah. buy into playing for a long time, lots and lots and lots of sessions, however long it goes. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll, we'll play until we don't like it. We'll play until it's over, you know, that kind of thing. You can get them to do that, or you can get them to play a single session. But to say we are playing two sessions and actually make it happen mm -hmm. is really surprisingly difficult. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why. Like, um, w when I was playing with various people, I noticed that it's very hard to invite people for for a different experience they know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when it, it was hard to, it's easier to tell people who haven't played before to play Stonk, Stoke Birmingham, but inviting people who played uh, traditional games to, to play it, it's hard. Well, because um, it's strange, you know. It's kind yeah. of strange, right, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, people who play, like, a long, very long campaigns, it's hard to tell them, oh, we're going to play a one-shot. Mm. Like, sometimes they don't really understand what's what's for. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, it, I think they, they're mm. telling something like they can't engage with the character or that they need several sessions to get into the character and feel uh, friends of their character and enemies. There's also the, the problem with the two sessions. Right. Uh, one is short enough that if a person accepts that it's just a throwaway experience, even they though it may not go, be, but that's what they think, right? Yeah. Right. So, if they think about it that way, they will maybe try it. Uh, and of course, there's people that see this as a loss of time because it's a waste. You don't have time to engage. They only think in long campaign form, so mm. it's weird. But if they get into the mindset, okay, why not? Mm -hmm. But two sessions, it means wasting a lot of time or maybe starting to get attached to something mm. and then throwing it away uh, mm. it, it it's in between uh, too little and enough yes. to be serious and at least so now you're talking about the perception of it while yeah. a person is considering yeah. it yeah right and also two sessions become a, a much bigger kind of um, engagement like you have to schedule two times. You have to assume the first uh, try will be good enough to get you to the table again. And if you and if mm. it's not, yeah. And because it's this new weird thing, you have a lot of fear about that. You don't know; it's unknown. So mm. there's a lot more resistance. While a single one shot, come on, just an evening, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. But two, ah, you're asking too much now. Right. Well, yeah, yeah, and with 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 two, it's harder to schedule. Like I can, uh, I know plenty of people who would meet once. Like let's let's uh, th they are like busy. Like they have, I know children. Yeah. I know whatever, mm -hmm. and they uh, can afford scheduling to play board games or play uh, RPG or something. But they won't tell me uh, two, 
two days they could meet with me, even well, if I'm very flexible. I get that, but I'm interested in the count in a, in a, a situation that's a little <laughs> bit less externally constrained. When, for example, a group really does meet regularly, mm -hmm. and it really they do would not consider it a problem to play Apocalypse World for six or seven or eight sessions. Mm -hmm. But this is the same kind of people, the same group of people that will have a lot of trouble doing Spiona for two. They will, they, mm -hmm. so it's not that they can't meet again or are uncertain about scheduling again. They they would say, oh, we finished it in one session. We finished um, it in one I session. Think, they I'm, drove I'm to, fin to finish it in one session. One, one extra thing, uh, that one shots are thought of as um, something you do between, uh, how to say Longer. it? Yes, you, you play right. a long time a campaign. Yeah, right. we, we need a filler. So the, we'll the phrase that used to be uh, used yeah, was beer and pretzels game. Okay. Because it was assumed, this was, this was one of the things that we encountered when people were writing games that were, more, were built for a session, was that it was assumed that their content had to be parody. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That they had to be. If you took it seriously, you must want to play it for multiple, multiple, multiple sessions. A group of strangers sessions. can't right. possibly right. be serious around the table one time, just the first time right. they meet. And the well, well time even if they aren't strangers, I mean, a group of great friends. Why would we? Mm. Why would we throw away a single session of our precious playtime <laughs> when we could be continuing our our important thing? You know. Anyway, so yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting mm. little narratives, as you can see. There's the counter phenomenon, which is perhaps I'm going to unfairly blame Jason Morningstar and say <laughs> once a, once you have had fiasco infect you, then all of a sudden the second you sit down, you start playing a weird psycho who plays, you know, does spastic failure, you know, and creates problems for everybody all around them, you know, and and you sort of expect it all to blow up and be over in a single session. And mm. you're playing a completely different game, and you're kind of wondering why you have a fiasco character at the table, but um, the, with no idea that you would invest in this character and actually be involved in their development through a series of events. Mm. Um, but that's just another habit. In, I'm just saying the habit works completely in reverse as well. Mm. There's um, also another scenario that I'm living through right now. Uh, I have a relatively steady play group. We meet once every week, and until we were just doing short form games, so one shot or two ga uh, two sessions games, three, four short games, mm -hmm. everything was fine, everything was peachy. But then we got kind of tired of constantly changing up, just doing one shot. We wanted something longer, more consistent to sink our teeth in. And that's where the problems began. Really? Because now you are, we are committing to something long term. This something has to be nice and satisfying to our personal tastes. So now we are a lot more criti uh, critic and intransigent in our game choices. <laughs> and we so now you start to argue. Spent, yeah. We literally spent three months keeping on doing one shots while arguing about what <laughs> to do seriously because suddenly mm -hmm. Pendragon guy wants to <laughs> try that finally right. but no one else is interested and then there's uh, the gemless guy that okay I refuse to live your life at this point so I don't even want to hear the details uh, <laughs> right. I have been there I'm not going to do it now <laughs> no one's beloved but no one's horror either right so. then you play the smooth blend and oh god again yes and yes. that's how next week we are starting blazing the dark but well, in my experience that I'm thinking of, there was the time when I kept, I, I had organized the group to play a few sessions or one session, depending on the game, repeatedly, and that we would just keep doing that. This was in 2000, we started playing Hero Wars, and then a year and a half later, we ended playing Hero Wars. You know, because we, we just, we, we could not stop. You know, we, we mm -hmm. finished about five sessions of a pretty good, uh, I, I think a, a really, everything that I had in mind that I had, 
okay. I hadn't really thought beyond the scope of what occurred um, for for that play period, mm -hmm. and then everybody in the group said, "No, let's we're not continue. stopping. We're not. Let's continue." Mm. Mm. No, it was not a suggestion. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was you're doing it or we will kill you. <laughs> and I was like, all right, <laughs> don't kill me. I'll prepare something else. <laughs> no. So, um, so that was a, a good version of that, you know, mm -hmm. where, where there is simply that socially and creatively people were not going to let this go. Um, so this is these, these, all of these interest me because we have the external issues of expectations of what games are supposed to be like if they go long or if they stay short. Then we have the times when the play experience surprises us. You thought it was going to go long, but you hit a stop point where nobody, even if they really like it, they're happier stopping. Even though the game is not supposed to, everybody is happier stopping. And for a good reason, perhaps. And then you have the situation, as I described, where the, the experience of play grabs you and says, no, you are, you are going to keep doing this even if you had not really even prepared. You had prepared something more like what we were talking about. The game could go on for a long time, but you have set up in your mind the scope of play, which is going to be covered by these few sessions. But the game says, no, no, there's a lot more to do here. And the system itself is calling you. Mm -hmm. You know, the system itself has things in it that, you know, people want to do. So there's intrinsic elements of fiction and experience so from the inside of the experience of play that are going to affect the length of play. Mm -hmm. Especially when you don't expect them. There are rules which affect the length of play and mandate it or affect it in some fashion. Then there are these social narratives about this game is supposed to be like that as well. Mm -hmm. And so you have all of these things happening at once. And in many ways, you have to be really mechanistic. I mean, and people do it, of course. I do it. Other people have done it. Really mechanistic to make it one session mm. or shorter. Yeah. You have to make it that way. Um, and so it's kind of... It, I'm not even sure if that's true, but there, there's some really interesting variables at work here that make talking about it, you can't just automatically say one shot and everybody knows exactly what you mean, except for the time limit. That's all Which you know. It doesn't tell you anything else. And not yes, even, advertised. Right. I mean, not I've played even... plenty of one-shot games, sorry, uh, that ended up lasting two sessions that's what i'm saying yeah yeah mm -hmm. they don't really offer you tools to control the content flow right. and depending on the group and the mood it's going to be short cool or bleed out into two or three even sessions yeah, it yeah. also depends depends a bit i, I mean i've, I've run uh, uh i've been going to uh, ember convention where we, we play a weekend of ember mm -hmm. four sessions one weekend and that's time time constraint because you know right. at some points you either uh, drop dead from exhaustion uh, at two two in, two at night <laughs> yeah, or yeah, four yeah. at night of, or, yeah. so you try to stop it before then um, or it's the end of the convention everyone has to go home right so it's, it's you you have th those four slots and it really teaches you to do a yeah. time restraint I but think I held was the next thing in the yeah. queue this, so, yeah yeah it's also a new interesting phenomenon. Uh, that has developed, I believe, in especially in online play mm -hmm. of doing uh, short campaigns of through three, four, five, six, or maybe six, but never more than that. And like that being a, a plan thing, like uh, since you are no longer constrained by okay, if I'm going to be, be meeting these, these people for more than one session, I have to make a, a, like a alter my life because we, uh, we have to go somewhere and find a place to go since you now can do that from your home you can do this a little bit short campaigns uh, uh, and also they allow you to play different games with different people um, 
but get to experience them in a somewhat more complete way if you did a one shot without having to uh, uh, like do the whole three years campaign. Which many I, people don't I have, have to think about this one because with Adapt to Play right now, this is kind of my experience. And yeah, um, so I'm, I'm thinking a little bit about it. So is the kind yeah, of Alexandra, very common? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alexandra was next, I think. So, so I, I think that we 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 have found something like mm, it's it's like pretty obvious, but uh, I think mm -hmm. so. We we are talking about some constraints, not by the game, but f from the reality or how mm -hmm. people interact in, and so on, and. As designer, we have to keep it in mind and design games to mm -hmm. either um, take those restrictions and use them for for our game. So we know that people uh, would rather play a one shot or a longer campaign. So we can do this, or use some tools that would make easier uh, for people to. Um, to do something that they wouldn't normally consider doing. Like, uh -huh. uh, what I was thinking, when we were designing the, the Beast, um, so it's about writing a diary, and people don't want to do it. I, I know this. Like, they don't like writing. Mm -hmm. um, and playing for 21 days, like, it's... It's fucked up. Yeah, you, you, you have a job. Yeah. Who's paying yes. me to do this? Right. Yes. Right. So, um, what I tried to do with the instruction mm -hmm. was to give cues. If you're uh, skipping a day, just start in, in the same place you were. Like, you're not punished by skipping a day. Mm -hmm. And the second thing was to acknowledge that you don't have to spend more than 15 minutes. Right, like it's, right. it's a short time. It's, it's and not a length of... What people would really hate is if you had a length of words, right? You have to yes. bust out this many words, right? Yes. Right, right. So, mm -hmm. it, it's still... It's, um, it's hard to have this, like, to remember about, like, every day for three weeks and, like... It's insane, right? But it's it's possible right the, now. Right. The other thing I was going to say is in in design as an interesting idea mm -hmm. is the design of a game without much mechanical tweaking. So I'm not talking about uh, a mandated or you know you have to change a number or something like that. That's not what I mean. But the game actually is very very robust for expanding. <clears throat> and contracting the scope of play. Now, one could say, well, we do that anyway. You know, we you know, we take these allegedly long-form games and we contract them into digestible chunks and playable chunks anyway. But I'm talking about something that in play itself expands or contracts in a useful and responsive fashion, um, again, without being overly mechanical about it, without being overly... Uh, engineered for it well like in uh dogs in the vineyard you have the initiation um yeah. mm -hmm. element when you make a conflict and it's like pretty short and even if we don't have time for anything else we can see how the game works for for with, with initiation suppose. it's kind of a good you that's possible um, I'm thinking perhaps I need to think a little bit more about how to articulate what my mind is doing mm -hmm. at the moment. But just I'm, I'm beginning to think in terms of we're playing this game mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. perhaps we were thinking that it was going to go on for a while, but there is a way to recognize that we are happier stopping now. And there is a way to recognize when we are when it's going to expand, and the game's reward system, to use that term, the mm -hmm. the the mechanics, the satisfying mechanics of the game, um, and their outcomes and the fiction that results, can expand or contract very nicely to that. 
Mm. That's the thing what that I'm comes about. to mind maybe could be microscope. You can play right. for as long or as short as you like, and mm -hmm. basically every instant, every bit of the game could be the conclusion of something. You just saw how a king fell. Mm -hmm. You just saw how a star was conquered. And it mm. is that possible at a smaller in. fictional scope? About my yeah. my uh, my lit not not the king or the star but you know um, my Your personal day yeah that's an interesting question uh, um, it's possible technically in that game I don't know about a reward system well that's that would help I'm using it in the say, vaguest sense this is satisfying right it's it, here. I'm using that in the vaguest that's sense I don't mean thing. I don't mean a reward mechanic I'm trying to stay away from a reward mm. mechanic I'm just talking about the experience of satisfaction that's all mm. um, so mm. anyway yeah cool um, we should probably decide uh, to close uh, does anybody have any games in mind that have come to mind in thinking about this? Um, that that uh, any other titles that strike us as worth pursuing? Because I know I'm going to finish the call and I'm going to curse and say you know a bunch of games that you I mean in to general mention. or for this last idea you no to... no not not for this last idea but in general for this topic what what are some uh, games that and I, let's avoid the mandated one-shot, mm -hmm. over-and-done, very satisfying little game, because there are thousands of those now. Um, um, well, two, uh, two examples of the kind of uh, uh, interesting examples. Um, uh, what's the name? Of, well, I, I, I'll try to remember the name, but there's this game which is supposed to be played for five sessions exactly and each section a different player is uh the gm and they get access to the to the content of the book up to that uh session oh, so right, then, right uh something las vegas or is that uh, is that a las vegas yeah right that's yes. that's um yeah that's an interesting example mm -hmm. uh and the other one that I was planning to mention in this talk is Fun of Will, right. which is like a very long-term game. Oh, but uh, people play it in digestible chunks all the time. Hmm. Right, right. Yeah, but it also has sort of a fictional endpoint because you are supposed to build a situation. And <clears throat> it can be like a really big situation, but when that is done... Like right. The, the Everway open. has the fate card of the realm that the characters are visiting, and it's on the side, and you don't know whether it's going to flip to reverse or flip to upright, and that that's then. So when the realm meets its fate, mm -hmm. you are you are ready to close that adventure. Um. So, Alexandra, you you looked like you thought of something a minute ago. Mm. I was thinking. Uh... So someone uh, said about a par um, premium adventures. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the first, the first episode <coughs> is a pilot, pilot. Mm -hmm. and it's a good for for demoing mm -hmm. because it shows you how the game how the game works and whether you want to continue or not. Mm -hmm. So it it works for convention because we can see you can see the game, but if we play it the whole thing we still it's a question like yeah do we like it yeah mm. yeah mm -hmm. some yeah it's an interesting point because whenever i have played short form primetime adventures single session i actually have always avoided the pilot mm -hmm. and <laughs> we spend a little bit of time instead we look at at the profiles we, we pretend that there is a a season Oh. And we find, mm. and everybody has distributed their spotlight yeah. numbers. That's the old, the old And then we look at the matrix of that for the season, and we look at which one we want to play, based on the spotlights. We say, "Oh, look okay. at that one." And it's it, it, it's hard to describe briefly, but it actually is very very effective. But anyway, it just has an interesting contrast to what you were saying. Mm -hmm. um, functionally, for our purposes, it's no different because we are finding a way to extract from primetime adventures which has this mandated number of sessions, either six or ten, 
um, that uh, which one you want. So we're um, really saying the same thing, but just different yeah. angles on that. For 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 demoing, I would like to like I was thinking to make a story, right? Before before, like people talk about the story and and I don't think I try. I I I feel like this anymore. Are you talking I, about the pitch where everybody debates about I, what no, to do? No, no, it's it's like as um. We came to the session. The session should be a, a full story with oh, I with see. an yes. ending. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I know it's not always possible because of the system or because people are it oh I have uh, something. Yeah. something else to do it or whatever. But I was thinking, um, like we have some tools we have things for quicker start like archetypes like made uh, made up characters before the session mm -hmm. um prepared setting and so on like doing in short uh, <coughs> short and fast f form and then to make uh a f something like first session of the game and it won't be a story but with would give players a feel uh, whether this game is fun or not. This, this mm -hmm. an important people say demo, which is the word you've been using, which yeah. is fine. But we should always remember that demo has a, a meaning most of the time that we are not admitting, which is promo. Yeah, yeah, right. So therefore, yeah. in, in what you are talking about makes a lot of sense if the idea is to say and you might like to get it and continue to play mm -hmm. you know i think i think i don't think it's possible to to take a full experience from a random session with random people uh playing a random game you know so i think demo is the best they can get well i agree that it's the best they if can they're get not hooked, but, right right then Right. Like, right. We we can talk more about this another time. I am talking about what actually happens at the conventions mm -hmm. and especially at the independent game gifts togethers when people are allegedly just playing right, but in lots of ways there is uh and unfortunately I remember when the Forge booth had one year where this happened and I was really upset about it when all of a sudden everybody was competing instead mm. of working together mm. and so it uh, as as booth members it it became very clear that demo at that point was competitive promotion and so i was <laughs> like wait a minute that is not what was happening here just even yesterday something has yeah. shifted and, so, and outside yeah. of indie conventions i've sometimes gone to more widespread like uh, general conventions and i sort of have to feel the responsibility of Oh, I'm bringing this Wii in the game. I have to sell impress. it well. That's right. I've got yeah, to make a point the, here. Yeah. Impress the normies. So, right, so, right. So <laughs> of all people, yes. Um, so, anyway. Also, I experienced a different kind of this same problem. And basically, maybe I am at a convention and I am bringing around my own game. And uh, I wanted to succeed, I wanted to do nicely. And I know that, uh, for example, with Faith Faithless especially, the oh, big okay. part of the charm of the game is what it can build because of the elements you provide during right. character creation. But everyone at a convention is in a hurry and right. they kind of expect uh, pre-generated characters. Yeah. And I'm like... No, well, yeah, the investment I, I is a big can. part of it. I could, yeah, but it, yeah. it's going to ruin mm. the experience. So yeah, why right. are we even here? Oh, I've run into and that with a couple a of different terrible games. Yeah. problem. Yeah, because it makes right. logistic sense, but then ah, yeah, you're not seeing the. Mm. I call it these days of plug and play. Right. Yeah. I want it, and so I'm finding it very interesting in working on champions now. Because the essence of champions is your investment in the character, and this character is very much yes. your own. And mm -hmm. so, granted, that has been taken to excess, where it takes three weeks to build your character, and you are practically yeah. taking square roots at some point. But Shadowrun. <laughs> right, right. But the uh, yes, but the thing I'm trying to say is that 
there is a very there are games in which that particular investment and i don't mean that time and complexity but its existence at all is exceptionally important so um anyway let's finish i think unless anyone has final thought herman final thoughts no i don't no? i don't okay. have any as yeah. any anything to add uh, i think i think this is like one of those nice symposia where you you everyone is is where certain variables have been pulled out apart from one another and to look at mm. and to say hmm you know what what how does it work and that's that's one of my goals so yep. thank you everybody for joining me and thank you for inviting um, us. yeah yep. I, I will look forward to talking to everyone again yeah so good thank night you. yeah good, good night. night bye, bye all